1942. Germany was in the ascendancy. The spread of the Axis had reached the golden sands of Egypt. Now Hitler's war machine was ready to push on towards the Suez. But Hagag el Kassaba wasn't just any military airbase. It also hid a terrible secret, a secret which, if true, would strike fear into the Allied front line. Tigers. This revolutionary new tank was tough enough to withstand all but the heaviest of shells and had a main gun that could reduce Allied tanks to burning wrecks in a matter of seconds. Germany's greatest weapon was only a field test away from being unleashed on the enemy front line. Everything now rested with Marianne Duriau, the French resistance spy. She had infiltrated the Henschel factory as a specialist mechanic before being assigned to the Tiger testing program in North Africa. With resistance comrade Julien Dupont, she had managed to persuade two of her fellow mechanics to betray the Third Reich and assist them with an audacious plan. Sandstorm's arrival was the perfect opportunity for Marianne to escape with the prototype. Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and uh, a new war story, Runaway Tiger, and I've forgotten to turn my phone off. There we go. And uh, yeah, a little bit late with this one, but better late than never. And uh, well, yeah, apologies for the lack of uploads again. Just so I was getting back on track with it all, we've had the sort of heating job from hell. Um, we're supposed to be having a new boiler put back, uh, put in, you know, some of you will be aware, and uh, yeah, we were supposed to be without hot water overnight. Um, we haven't had hot water since last Tuesday, um, when the uh, the boiler and the hot water tank were ripped out. And uh, the, the new boiler was supposed to be put in sort of Wednesday, I think it was, or Thursday, and then there's just sort of been issue after issue, issue with uh, the wrong size pipes being used upstairs, apparently an issue where the uh, the, the plumbing supply place had allocated the boiler and uh, when the plumber went to pick it up they'd given it to somebody else. And then uh, we'd been waiting for it, well we should have had it Friday, never turned up, uh, and so we've been all weekend again and the house is in complete disarray. And, I mean this, this job should have taken basically two days. Um, swap some pipes, put the boiler in it, should have been a two day job um, but the plumber hasn't been turning up till one o'clock in the afternoon so uh, it was four days last week um, and, uh, and well there you go you know uh, and it's still not done yet and we've had snow over the weekend so it's been quite cold um, so yeah the house is in complete disarray uh, trying to, to get footage I've had to just set up I've had to basically just set my setup up where I could just to try and get um, the footage for this. But anyway, uh, enough of that, here we are. Uh, the new war story, uh, Runaway Tiger. Uh, you play French resistance worker, uh, or French resistance worker, French resistance fighter, um, who has basically snuck in and got herself a job as a specialist mechanic, and is now stealing a prototype Tiger. And uh, I quite enjoyed this one. Uh, you've got to destroy uh, 10 Tiger prototypes, which kind of, you know, I thought, oh, am I going to have to look for them? But no, it, they're just sort of here. Um, as you're sort of travelling about, you will come across them. And this first bit's quite fun because you are pretty much immune to everything um, in this part. I think there might... You may see a Sparpanzer, um, which I think is the only thing that can give you a bit of, uh, a bit of damage. But I can't quite remember if that's on this one or the next one. But the prototype Tigers only take, a, you know, one shot to destroy them. And uh, they are marked as you come across them. And this map is a, well I say it is a modified version of Scorpion Pass, it's actually 
Um, the back part, mostly apart from this factory bit, um, is the back part of uh, Scorpion Pass, the bit that you can't get to anymore. Um, when it was a, a PlayStation exclusive map, it was huge. In fact, I think it was the, the biggest map in World of Tanks, including PC actually at the time, if I remember rightly. And uh, when it basically moved across to, to the Xbox, um, you know, it was it was said that they considered the map too big or whatever, and it, it wasn't. It was basically because the, the 360 itself would have been an older console, couldn't handle a map of that size, so they had to shrink it down. And uh, that's why Scorpion Pass is as it is now. And I, I kind of miss it. I kind of miss the old big Scorpion Pass. I miss this back bit. Um, obviously, it didn't have this factory in it, but yeah, there was some good stuff uh, to do down in this sort of back bit. It was a bit more open. There was a village down there. Um, but it was, uh, I don't know, it was a nice part of the map, and I do kind of miss it. Um, because it was that, a bit more open in the third map on this. I love it. I love the look of it. I can't figure out what it is if it's one that we've got already. I don't think it is. I don't think it's a heavily modified version of an existing map, but I could be wrong. Um, but I like it, and I kind of wish it was in the game. Um, it's very open. You know, it is an open map, but lots of rocks and things to hide, and just enough enough cover with the sort of dips and gullies, um, I think, in it. But yeah, it, it does, you know, it is a nice map, and it, it'd be a nice map for light tanks. I know maps and map rotations being, you know, people are going on about it quite a bit, and, you know, I can see why, because it is, it does seem to be that most of the maps that are, are now out of rotation are the more open maps, where light tanks could really thrive. And uh, we've now got these sort of close-in maps, or mostly close-in maps, where you really, you know, you you've really got to know what you're doing to actually do well in light tanks on a lot of them, because you've not got that. You you've not got that open space. Um, I know I'm not really going on about much of this war story, but this one, this first part is actually probably the longest part they did. Uh, I wasn't going to go for ammo and what have you, but I thought, do you know what? I don't know what I'm going to come up against. I'm going to grab some ammo. I've got a pretty crap gun. So I did change my mind there. But yeah, this this first part is pretty long. But yeah, um, with these more closed-in maps with the light tanks, it's sort of, you know, you're on top of the enemy before you can spot them. You know, you've got nowhere to sort of fall back and use your spotting distance you know, spotting range to your advantage, you know, along with your, your camouflage, where you can outspot the enemy. Generally, if you see them, they're able to see you because you're so close. Um, but anyway, back to this one. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this uh, this war story. Uh, I did, this first part was, was like I say, the longest part, um, I think, out of any of the war stories. Um, and I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was quite cool. You know, nicking the tiger, trying to escape. Something's managed to get alongside me there. But you are, I mean, you are pretty much immune. Even though you've only got a 75mm gun at this point, or 7.5cm, depending on how you want to say it. Um, you are pretty much immune. Um, I think my only gripe with this war story, and again, you know, these war stories, I've enjoyed them. I've done a couple of them more than once, but that was gen that was basically just for the trophy. You know, jumping in a minute tier 10 sort of thing. Um... And I have enjoyed the war stories, but I, I can't see myself playing them more than once, if you see what I mean. But I, I think that the the fact that when you do them, you unlock a you know a package at 65% discount is really good. Uh, the one from this one is the captured KV-1 for, I think it's about 1,200 or, or 1,600 gold, maybe 1,200, something like that. Which is a fantastic price for the captured KV-1. And uh, these bundles have been really, really, you know, some of them have been fantastic, you know, really good value the uh, the one where you got the snake bite really cheap as well awesome um so yeah you know really happy with that but i like i say i can't see myself playing them more than once but i have enjoyed them just a, a bit of a break from the norm really with, with world of tanks um i think i probably found this part kind of the most enjoyable even though it is pretty basic, you know, you're just sort of driving through, following the, generally just following the road, capture these little bases as you go, um, and move along. I did kind of find this first part the more enjoyable out of out of the three. Um, the third part just seemed a bit standard, you know, in a way. Um, if you see what I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of the words. 
it kind of it, it just kind of seemed a bit too similar to to the others. You know, the the setup, the way that they've done the others. Whereas this one was a, a little bit different. You were on your own. I think you're on your own in the second part as well. And there's only actually a third part. You've got allied tanks with you. And again, just contemplating whether to grab the ammo. There's nothing saying not to, so might as well grab it and, and keep stocked up. You do seem to earn a bit more from these uh, as well this time around. They have sorted that one out. And uh, from this one, uh, I basically just to try and get it done because, you know, I've been a bit pushed for time, not being able to get on it as much. Um, after this one, which I think I got about 3,500 XP out of it, just doing this first part. Um, just used a bit of free XP just to basically... Um, just to, to get the upgrade on it, you've only got the one upgrade which gets you the you know the top everything else, top turret, the, the long ATA, etc. But at this, you know, for this level, this gun is, is more than enough. Um, you could probably get away with this gun on the second level as well, although you do have to fight a tiger um, at the end of it, so maybe, but he's equipped with a short ATA with, with the stock turret. Um, but yeah, just just for ease and trying to get through this, just to like I say, get the footage done and use some free XP just to to drop the full upgrade package on. But it is uh, this one; it is just driving through. It's just a long, a long level, but a lot of it is sort of driving from part to part and capturing these bases as well. But it was uh, it was fun. It was fun doing it in the Tiger. Although, uh, yeah, most of the stuff you come up against throughout the whole thing, you, you're fairly immune to damage from. You might take the odd little bit or they'll track you. Um, there are a few tanks, the odd ones thrown in that can, that can damage you. Um, you come up against some Panthers on the, the third part. You, like I say, you come up against another Tiger on the second part. And a couple of um, slightly, not higher tier, but sort of higher than uh, Panzer 4Hs. I think there might be six tier 6 mediums that can, if you're not careful, give you a bit of a, a knock. You've got to go for the round when you can, haven't you? You've just got to do it. But yeah, the um, my only slight gripe with, with this one, um, or my main sort of gripe with it, it's not even really a gripe, it's just the cutscenes were very quiet on this one for some reason. So I've tried to alter the, the volume the, the volume levels um, accordingly so that you can actually hear the cutscenes because even as they were actually playing as I was doing it, I was struggling to hear them. And I'd have to turn it up and then turn it back down again. Um, for the for the actual level, so like I say, if you do have to turn it up a little bit for the cutscenes, do apologise. I've tried to sort the volume levels out as best I can for it, but it's just a case of winding your way through these gullies. And I think this one probably takes the longest because you do sort of have to be, you do have to follow the road in a way and take this sort of roundabout route from, well, from the bottom corner of the map all the way around the back. Um, passing close to the, the bottom right corner as you're looking at the map all the way up to the top right corner and then uh, sort of snaking your way back down the middle of the map a bit more towards the, the last point so you do have to take a bit of a roundabout route and I think that's what takes the time with this one um, and a hell of a lot of tanks to shoot at a hell of a lot just making sure that was nothing that was going to give me too much trouble on that side but he seems to be bouncing, so I just took that guy out. And now I can concentrate on him. And, yep, yeah, why not? Ramming speed. you got to do it, haven't you? When you've got that opportunity. Because, let's face it, you know, you don't get a safe opportunity to ram somebody very often in the, uh, you know, in the standard games. You get plenty of opportunities to ram people in standard games, just not when it's particularly safe. But now you've just got to work your way through this gully. Uh, fight off a few more tanks and then capture the base at the end. So I know it sounds a bit tedious, uh, but it was enjoyable. It was actually, it made the sandstorm enjoyable for once. Uh, because normally that just they kind of irritate me a little bit. Um, extreme weather maps, I don't mind them. But, you know, I don't mind that they're there because they don't come up very often, but... I just always seem to get them and get on them in tanks that I really don't want to be on them in. Like if I think oh, I'll jump in a light tank because I've not been in one for ages or something like that it'll generally be on a sandstorm one. Whereby again, you know, admittedly you've got better camouflage and a lot of stuff in there. 
um, but your view range is pretty much the same as a lot of the stuff in there, at, you know, at high levels. Although I think they did change it now, didn't they? Uh, an update or two ago. Went for the ram and missed him. Yeah, they changed it an update or two ago where it's not a, a blanket change with the, the extreme weather maps. It used to be a set amount. I think it just took off something like 50% of your view range across the board or classes. And I think they did alter that so that it affects the different classes differently. So I think light tanks, you know, I, I don't know the exact numbers um, and I could be getting a bit confused. I'll have to go back through the patch notes um, for the last couple of updates. But I think they did change it. So like, for example, it might take off 30% of a light tank's view range, 40 of a medium, 50 of a, a heavy sort of thing. Um, if I remember right, or if they didn't do that, they were on about doing that, um, but I'm pretty sure they did. But I've now got to the, the last point. I've got to the extraction point. In fact, no, we do see a panther on the, on this point. And uh, what's he got there? Has he got the Schmaltem turret? So if he has, I'm trying to see if he's got the comedy gun. I wasn't really paying much attention when I was doing it. Although he's the one that I need to take down first. The other guy can damage me, but not if I angle properly against him. The panther is the bigger threat, definitely. Yeah, he's got the comedy, uh, comedy L100. 198 pen. He's gonna have no trouble getting through my armor, as you can see, which he didn't. This guy, yeah, he's not really much of a threat. Give him a bit of a ram, bully him, shove him about a bit, and just carry him with the shells in. I'm pretty safe from him now. And there we go. He is the last one, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's the last guy, and now it's just a case of sitting in cap and waiting. Uh, waiting to cap out. Which is a bit frustrating. I would have thought that, you know, it might, do, might not be the last enemy. I was going to say when you destroy the last enemy, or to just do it as though you'd capture the capture point. But then again, that might not be the last tank. I might have missed one somewhere. Could be an arty hiding about somewhere. There are enemy arty on a couple of these maps. Um, I got taken by surprise actually on the third one by an arty. I just the tiger was didn't realise they were in it until the one hit me. This would change the course of the war and save thousands of hours. I'll be back after the, the next cutscene. Sandstorm had masked their escape from Hagag el Kassaba, but they couldn't risk breaking radio silence and alerting the German pursuers to their whereabouts. Marianne and her team would have to get back to the British lines on their own. could not let their tiger fall into enemy hands. If they could not recapture their stolen tank, then they would make sure nothing remained of it. Here we are for the second part of the war story. Uh, this is a... Uh... After the sandstorm, I don't know if it's modified even. It might be that the same. The Germans were more than prepared to keep their prototype a secret from the Allies. No, he's finished. Um, Any oh, German no. scout units had to be dealt with and quickly, lest they give away her position and call in backup. Uh, as you can see, this is Kesserine. I don't think it's modified. I think it's just had a couple of bases put in there. So, well, you know, obviously it's modified slightly, but not um, as heavily as some of the other maps have been. And with this one again, it's kind of 
I don't know whether to just go straight down the middle valley, um, but you do have to take out these scouts to try and prevent them from raising the alarm. The scouts are marked uh, with that small target you saw on there. So you take them out. And, uh, well, I don't know what happens if you don't, to be honest. I'm assuming you get more tanks after you. Uh, I don't know if it'll... I don't think it'll be a fail with it being a secondary objective. Uh, but as you can see, I'm fully equipped uh, with the, the long 88 top turret engine, which, you know, makes a difference to your acceleration. But again, it's pretty much just a, a turkey shoot, if you will. Going through fairly immune to... Just about everything you'll come up against until sort of the uh, the end part of it where you'll fight a boss. You fight two bosses through this war story, one on this one and one on the next one. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of going through, like I say, taking out the scouts. When the scouts do appear, take them out first, then go for the others. They're normally the, the tougher tanks as well. Um, not tougher, but the ones that would probably do you more damage than anything else. And... Um, yeah, just go for them before before anything else. And then just, just mop up whatever's left, basically. And it, I suppose it is pretty straightforward. Uh, capture these bases, it'll just give you a bit of a top-up uh, with some of the stuff. So, just a case of capturing the base, taking people out and wandering through the level. Now, fingers crossed, um, if we get our new boiler today, which I'm not holding my breath, uh, over the course of the, the rest of the week, I will be bringing you footage of the tier 10 tanks again. A bit late, but better late than never. Uh, I've been very kindly given a, a test drive account, um, myself and, and the other CCs, uh, by Wargaming. Um, so yeah, I've been very, like I say, very kindly given a test drive account, and it's basically got every tech tree tank um, unlocked, including the tech tree premiums unlocked and on there. For us to have a potter about in uh, for the next few weeks. And uh, really grateful for that. It's going to be a, a huge help um, because I can, like I say, just show the tier 10 tanks and, and some of the uh, tier 10 lights, sorry, and the, the other new light tanks yeah, without having to grind through them to or grind to them. The and uh, it also means um, that the the series has started with the, the road to, uh, not the road to, um, the, uh, the German heavies. I was going through that like I did the British heavies, sort of going through, having a look at them, trying to give you a few tips on them, that sort of thing. Um, it means that I, if I pull my finger out and uh, if everything goes well, I can actually get footage in all of those without having to rebuy them and retrain a crew every time. Because at the minute, that's what I'm having to do. You see, I'm having to to basically rebuy uh, the heavy tanks that I've already been through and got rid of, and I'm having to, to retrain a crew each time to, to go in one. You know, overtrain them or put them in and, and you know train them up to uh, 100%. So that will save a lot of time because obviously. That test account comes with, uh, you know, every skill crew sort of thing, uh, crews um, on all the tanks. So I'll make it a lot easier for that, so I can just jump in the, the Panzer 7, um, jump in the Maoshin without having to buy that one. Um, I've already got it unlocked on mine, but, you know, I've still got to, to fork out for it and get a crew in it. And it just means, like I say, they're all there, so I can jump in them without having to retrain and rebuy tanks. So it's, it'll be a, a huge help over the next few weeks, and uh, I may even try and uh, try and get some of the. I don't know if I can get some of the other ones done, but I can definitely get the German one done. And obviously, there's a couple of well, a couple of three different lines of heavies through there. Got the way through the Tiger P, through the Tiger. Um, obviously, the Tiger P, uh, Tiger P, Tiger P splits into where uh, um, the uh, the VK. 100 and 1P, which I've done, but obviously up to the motion, but it also splits into the VK 4502A and the 4502B, so I can get the the, the, the the OA done and all that sort of stuff. The OA. Um, yeah, the 4502A. And, uh, yeah, just going to be, like I say, a big help, so, yeah, a big thank you to Wargaming and, uh, for that one. And back to this. As you can see, took out the scout. Uh, still, well, took out the scouts. Still got two more, sorry, one more uh, that's going to appear. I got fed up with this guy dodging backwards and forwards. They do the, the normal AI thing, just sort of move backwards and forwards or move along a, a set sort of route. <coughs> route. I nearly couldn't talk then, my voice just went all together. Um, it's funny because I've got my coffee here. 
And now it's just a case of going and trying to, to take this guy down and then try and get to the last scout, take him out, move to the extraction point and then uh, you end up fighting a tiger boss. And uh, like I said before, he does have uh, the short 88, so he can pen your armor quite well, uh, you know, quite easily. So you you know, you you got to side scrape against him or just angle a bit because he can pen the front of you. And uh, again, it's sort of the thing that holds you up a little bit on this one is sitting and capturing the, the extraction points or the bases. Um, which don't take as long as, as it does obviously in multiplayer, but it's still, you know, it's still sort of 20, 30 seconds where you just sat you know, twiddling your thumbs. And the reason I face it that way is because of that. Uh, I wanted that repair because I did. Um, well, didn't expect the Tiger and got a bit overconfident. And, and basically, you know, overconfidence got me in trouble and ended up dying the first time I attemp attempted this one. And it was just... It's not that it was difficult, it was just a stupid mistake. You know, just a stupid, silly mistake. Uh, like I said before, just a bit of overconfidence, bad placement, and uh, I just got myself kind of surrounded a little bit. Now, you don't have to go across this bridge. Uh, when you do, the one pops up down to the right, and it is one of the scouts, so you want to take him out first. Uh, but as you move further across the bridge, other tanks do come into view and will be able to shoot you. But you need to take him down, because he's the scout, he's the one that's going to try and uh, raise the alarm. Tracking them if you can, obviously helps. And I am taking some hits from the side, as you can see, and that's that bad placement. So, what I would probably say with that one, if you've not already done this, is don't go across the bridge. As you're going towards the bridge, veer off to the right and go around the sort of entrance to that gully that the scout comes up out of. Then you'll avoid getting yourself in a crossfire between the scout and whatever tank is over there. In fact, yeah, the way that I'm going now, after I've already put myself in a crossfire and taken damage, yeah, that's the way I'd probably say go around here, and you'll be able to take the scout out. Um, I don't know about the other tank across there, whether he'd have a shot at him from here, possibly, uh, with where he'd place himself, but if not, you just sort of go back around a little bit and up, and you'll be able to get to him. And once you've done that, it's uh, just a case of going for the last extraction point. There will be... Um, I can't remember, there is the boss down here and I can't remember if there's one or two tanks with him. Um, but the other two tanks that are down here you don't really need to, to worry about too much. They're not things that will, uh, you know, give you any real sort of pause. Well, not if you aim properly, which I didn't. Uh, I did with the second one. The most infuriating thing is that they keep going behind the buildings. So quite often you're best off just waiting for them to try and shoot at you and destroy the building and then you can shoot, you know, into the gap that they've just created. And I have angled against him. I'm trying to, to hit his ammo rack. I know roughly where it is, but if I can hit his ammo rack or damage his ammo rack, I can slow down his rate of fire. There we go. Uh, because he does have, with that short 88, a, a, you know, an increased rate of fire, I think, over this one. Or did he? I know he used to, but I can't remember now, because obviously it's got buffed a while back, didn't it, the rate of fire? But anyway. Going for his ammo rack's not going to hurt anybody, is it, apart from him? It's not going to hurt me. And uh, now it's just a case of mopping up whatever's here. There were a couple, as you can see, the, the 2801 and a Panzer 4H. But again, the tanks are sometimes different, so you might get something different to what I had. And I was going to go for ramming speed, but I thought, you know what, now just get close, put a shell into him, get into this uh, this cap. And once this is capped, I think that's the end of the level as well, yeah. Cap to the extraction point, um, which is obviously escape the German control region. You do that by capturing the extraction point. Uh, I grabbed the, uh, yeah, I did decide to grab the repair just in case anything else turns up. I don't know why I thought anything else would turn up, because I just defeated the boss. But, you know, prepare for anything, then you're not going to be surprised. And uh, knowing my luck, it'd be one of those things, if I didn't grab the repair kit, then I probably would have had other stuff turn up, or Wargaming would have put it in as a bit of a surprise for, you know, for that sort of thing. But no, you just grab it, sit in here, nothing else comes, so you just sit and wait for it to cap out to, to finish this one. So, Our I'll be back after the next cutscene. through the German defences. Now the Allied front line was within sight.
The fight between these mechanical monstrosities had been savage. The sands of the Egyptian desert stained black with their spilt blood. But luck had favored Marianne, as the German tiger now burned fiercely in death. Nothing could stop them from reaching their goal. Or so they thought. battle between the British 8th Army, under the command of General Claude Auchinleck, and Rommel's infamous German Africa Corps, the last obstacle standing in Marianne's way. There was no other choice. She'd have to fight her way through the Germans, and pray that the British wouldn't mistake her tiger for the enemy. El Alamein and the Allied front line was close, but an almighty battle now blocked her path. So here we are for the final part of this war story, and it's on El Alamein. And uh, this is the one that I wasn't sure. Looking at the map here. Yeah. Uh, looking at it, sorry, I spoke over him. Basically just saying that, you know, there was there was a huge battle at El Alamein, and uh, apparently I'm going to be in the middle of it. So I've got to get across here, take out German tanks as I go, try and get to the town um, to support the Allies. Now, when I looked at the actual map top down, you know, the, the mini-map, it, it kind of, for some reason it looked familiar. You know, like it, it kind of is a, a modified version of an existing map, just that it takes a change. But the more I look at it and the more I look around, I don't think it is, or if it is, I cannot figure out what it is, and I'm pretty sure... See, at one point I, I, I did wonder if it was heavily modified part of, uh, of Kesserine again. Um, you know that sort of, as you're looking at the Kesserine map over on the right hand side and maybe turned it and, and modified it slightly. But again, really not sure um, whether it is that, whether it is heavily modified or whether it is something, something new. But I, I cannot quite place this map, but it does kind of feel familiar. So I don't know if any of you guys can place it, but if not, and it is something completely new, which I, I, I kind of think it is, I would like to see this um, in-game, because it is a bit more open. It, it's sort of what we're missing, you know. I'm not saying all the maps have to be open, that the city ones can be, you know, fun in their own right, but when all you're playing on is city maps or sort of enclosed maps or the smaller maps or even some of the ones which have what appears to be open areas is still kind of corridorized and you're on top of each other a lot so having something like this would be a bit of a nice change to having it. It doesn't seem massive but it does just seem that bit more open um, but there's still places to hide you know you've still got the sort of danger bits as well um, but yeah I think this would be quite fun to, to have in a proper game uh, just to see how it would work but like I say it, it kind of seems familiar bits of it but I, I just can't quite place it so I'm not sure whether this is something new or whether it is just heavily modified um, but yeah bits of it do kind of remind me of Kesserine but just modified a lot or, or maybe the map sort of turned spun around a little bit I don't know but this one, it is very easy to get yourself in a crossfire if you're not careful. Because you're sort of very tempted to come down that central road. Now, you, you know, you can do it two ways. You can either come down the central road like I have, get their attention and they will come and try and, you know, take you out. And you can filter a couple off like I have. Um, uh, and try and do it that way. You could have veered off round to the left, sort of going through G3, F2, you know, E2, up that way, and veered round behind them. But then again, if you come round behind them and get their attention a bit too much, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure though, it's just been a bit slow on the fire for some reason. Um, you could end up facing all of those on your own, and there are a couple of Panthers in there. You know, they will pen you very easily, they don't do a lot of damage per shot. But 
you know, it's not going to take a, a lot when there's two of them firing at you because they've got a good rate of fire to chip you down quite quickly. But you do have to be careful of the crossfire in this one. And uh, again, I died the first time I went on this one. I kind of died a bit. Said to defend them from a particular position. Went to that position. Nothing happened. Decided to go and get a, a health pickup. Just to top myself back up and got myself again in a bit of a crossfire and surrounded. And that was where the, the sort of danger lies: is getting yourself surrounded uh, if you're not careful. There's one of the Panthers, try and take him down before he takes down any more of the Allied tanks. The more of these guys he can save, the easier it's going to be for the next part of this this mission. Um, you know, which makes sense. You know, the more people on your team, the easier it's going to be. And uh, this is, I mean, I'd recommend once you've taken them down and it says defend your teammates from this position. If you need it, just grab the health pickup just to top yourself up. To be honest, by the time you've grabbed it, got to the marker waited for the enemy tanks to turn up it's generally a few seconds before it pops back up and you know you can pick it up again if you need the to Allied it's not as though you've only got it once attack, as the Germans threw everything at Marianne, now I did to decide to, to wait here this time because like I say uh, I came to this point then went and got the health pick up and got myself surrounded so I thought I'll wait here this time let them come to me because it's probably a, a better defensive position nothing happens so, um, I moved in a little bit just into what is basically our our capture point or our, our base, whatever you want to, to call it, but it, it pops up when you get to there. You can see the white line on the floor. So I just crept forwards into it a little bit more, and that is when they started to turn up. Now, again, you don't have to take down everybody, I don't think, on this point. Uh, the boss turns up. And, you know, I was saying before about, you know, you fought the boss, nothing else generally turns up after the boss on that last mission. On this one, it does. So, do be prepared for that. And they do come in a bit of an awkward position, and you can see they try and flank you and get around you. Um, but I went for the boss, just went straight for the boss, try and take him down. And uh, I don't think, if I remember rightly, again, you, you have to kill everybody on this one. You take down the boss, maybe a couple of others, and then it tells you to, to go and capture this other point, capture the extraction point. And that's when some more tanks turn up. However, if you hide behind the rock, they don't see you. Um, so it, it's not too bad. But they are trying to, to capture this space. Panthers, again, are kind of like your biggest concern, because, like I said before, even though they, they don't have a, a great damage um, output per shot they do have quite good DPM and they have very very good pen so they're the ones that are going to pen you uh, if anything's going to pen you it's probably going to be the panther occasionally some of the others but I've still got to defend the town and like I said I can't remember if you have to kill everybody here or not seemingly you do so let's see oh there's the uh, the RT that's the one that first alerted me to the fact that the enemy tanks, well the enemy have arty which concerned me a little bit because I don't want one of those to hit me in the side or the rear and give me a good old whack, they could ruin my day and uh, my voice was about to go then, sorry, I sounded a bit weird so I'm going to go after this 3002D he could probably give me a bit of trouble yeah possibly um, I should be angling a bit more probably against him this was it now you see I took him down, there is still an enemy tank over there as you can see, um, but I took down that 3002D and then it said I can go and capture the extraction point, so instead of hanging around I just decided to go straight for it. You can pick up the uh, the health pickup before you go for it again um, if you need to, because even though you've defeated the boss some other tanks will show up once you, you get into that extraction point. As you can see there, Artie started making his way across. I wasn't going to go back and put a shot in, but I would have had to mess about. He'd, he'd managed to get behind uh, behind some hard cover behind the ridge there before I could uh, get back in. I just didn't. I wasn't paying attention. I was going straight for this, so that's why I hid behind the rock. Uh, I wanted to stay out of sight because I didn't want Artie to, you know, I didn't want to get spotted and Artie to start raining down on me. Um, and depending on where he is. I don't know how much cover it would have provided me, but it, it would, it, you know, why make his shots any easier? 
So you get behind here, you start capturing it, and then tanks will start appearing over those ridges. So if you are prepared for it, you can get some shots in. I wasn't, so I was just waiting for the aim time. I, I didn't bother putting any equipment on this. I never do in the story mode tanks. It just seems a bit of a waste um, at the minute. You know, I'm still grinding through tanks. I'm still spending silver, um, you know, quite a bit. So it's, you know, it's not as I've got millions of it saved up and, you know, I've got nothing to spend it on. So, yeah, I'm just not bothered putting equipment on any of these story mode tanks. But that's where they start turning up. I did get spotted. I wasn't too concerned. Um, I thought as long as I'm careful, as long as none of them are really aiming at me and taking shots, I don't want them to knock down my capture thing uh, when I was so close. And that's it. Captured. Done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. There is another cutscene at the end. Uh, fingers crossed I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I know I've got to upload LA in a while. I'm going to do that over the next couple of days and catch up. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that one. So uh, until, well, until the next time, uh, take care of then. I'll catch you next time. See you later. a hellish sandstorm, evaded their pursuers, and fought their way through El Alamein. Only now did the enormity of Marianne's feet finally hit home. Stolen Tiger proved invaluable to the Allies. It was mined for information and probed for weaknesses. As a result, it failed to become the legendary tank it rightly deserved. Germany would have to wait until 1944 and the Tiger II before the Allies had another German tank to truly fear. But by then, the war was already lost.